Thanks everybody. How exciting. We're gonna talk about career purpose tonight and your future to wrap everything up. So welcome, let's get started. As usual, we're going to do a quick review from what we talked about last week. Last week was all about success and happiness and what that means to you in your life. We talked about work drama and the fact that uh, leadership spends about 33% of their time when they deal with drama, it has to do with ego problems. And so one thing I taught you last week, um, other than don't bring your drama to work, is that it's really not your job's job to keep you happy. And hopefully, if you are in the midst of some drama yourself, which all of us always are, we're only human, hopefully you don't bring that to the workplace with you. The next thing I taught you last week is that self-reflection is key to accountability. And accountability is really important because that comes into play when we talk about happiness. Happiness is the degree to which a person holds themselves accountable to their external circumstances. There are many different definitions of happiness out there. If you were to Google it, this happens to be my favorite definition of happiness that I have found. And I think it works very well um, in my life for me. And it seems to work very well when I teach this concept to other people. So we concluded last week with a sentence that I found from a book that started with, self-development is less about learning new skills as it is about discovering ourselves, discovering who we are, what's going on inside. So I will finish that conclusion when we reach our conclusion slide at the end of my presentation tonight. So let's get started and talk about tonight. <clears throat> I listed a quote here that I heard in a webinar a few months ago and I thought it was brilliant. The biggest problem humans have is not learning, but unlearning. So I thought that this quote was brilliant and I wrote it down and now I use it. I, I wish I knew who said it, but I don't. So this is going to come into play, not only for tonight's presentation, but it's very relevant to the whole course. So once I talk about career purpose, that will be the majority of tonight's presentation. I'm also going to touch on your future and what that means for your future. I'll wrap it up with a great conclusion. And then I'll leave you with one final quote. So question one, I listed here on this slide. Name something that was difficult for you in life to unlearn. So that could be a skill. Uh, it could be a belief that you've held for a long time. Um, it could be, um, Let's see, what else could it be? Beliefs or skills, uh, maybe concepts or ideas that once you learn something, uh, you found it very difficult to undo. So of course, this goes back to the quote here that I listed at the top. Um, and so for me, one example that I will throw out there that comes to my mind is I did a lot of project managing um, in the last few years of my time as an engineer. And one of my goals was to take what's called the PMP exam. Um, and it stands for project management professional. And so once you pass this exam, you become a certified project manager. And I remember studying for the exam and I took it and I failed it the first time. It was really tough. And somebody told me after I took the exam, they said, if you ever take it again, just forget everything you learned when you were a project manager. Don't follow what you did when you actually practiced. And I said, what? That does not make sense to me. So for me, I found that very difficult to unlearn the things that I learned on the job, just to take an exam. Uh, so for me, that is one example that comes to mind. So uh, just type something in the chat, something that was difficult for you to unlearn. Now let's get started by talking about your career purpose. And 
I want to, I want to tell you, I wish this is something I knew when I graduated from college. Work purpose or career purpose is not found in these destinations that sometimes we think it is, such as getting that title or prestige or making a certain amount of money. Um, retirement is another big one. Have you ever worked with people whose goal was to reach retirement or even to try to reach it early, earlier in life than most people? Um, of course, benefits is another reason people think they need to go to work. And what I want you to understand tonight is that these are not the purposes of work. Um, these are nice benefits. These are nice byproducts. Some of them are even luxuries to have. Um, but if your motivation and if your goal is to obtain money or, or, or titles or prestige or other destinations, then I think you are missing a profound reason why we work in the first place. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about here tonight. So career purpose is not about destinations. It's about a journey. And that journey includes these three principles here, service and development and legacy. So let's dive into these. Starting with service. What do I mean by that? When you go to work and if you have a service mindset, that means you are ready to contribute towards something greater than yourself. You're ready to contribute to your team, to a department, to your employer as a whole so they could be profitable and make money. You are ready to contribute to whatever it is your employer asks you to do. As a collective, people in a group make more profound impacts as opposed to working solo. So what I've got here in this slide are a couple of examples of on the right hand side, how you could create a service attitude for yourself as you go to work, as opposed to the left hand side of the table, uh, which is perhaps an easier route to take. Um, I have known people who have said all of this um, at work at one point or another, and this is getting outside of your lane. So getting outside of your lane, remember, is when you're concerned about those things that you cannot control. So instead of asking, what am I getting out of this? Why should I do this? Just because they asked me, just because I can do it, doesn't mean I should, why should I? Well, on the right, I would encourage you instead to have an attitude of what can I put into this? On the left, other people aren't pulling their weight. I'm the only one doing all the work around here. Okay, trust me, I have heard that many times at work. Instead, try to ask yourself, how can I help others succeed? What is it I can do to lift the people up around me? Number three, this isn't part of my job. I'm not doing it. That's not, that's not my job description, uh-uh. Okay, I have definitely heard that at work. I would encourage you, instead of going down that route, ask yourself, where can I add value for the sake of adding value? And the last one, this is a big one. I wonder how much of a raise I'm gonna get this year. What is my raise gonna look like? Again, that's getting outside of your lane because you can't control your raise. You, you, you can try to influence it, but at the end of the day, that's not your decision. Instead, ask yourself, how can I raise my own standards? What can I do to better serve the company, the objectives, and the people around me. When it comes to serving at work and going to work with a service mindset, I have a list of tools and concepts here that I have taught you throughout this class. Work relationships, getting rid of your ego, building your self-confidence, recognizing self-sabotage, setting boundaries for yourself, contributing to your employability vault all the time, learning how to be vulnerable, buying in at work or getting the heck out and holding yourself accountable. These are all ways that you can help serve your organization and the teams that you work with. And I've taught you other things that I'm sure we could list on here under service, but for the sake of space, 
these were the ones that came to my mind first. So the takeaway from this slide is approach your work. Go to work with a mindset of staying in my own lane and how can I serve the people and the things around me. So that's what service is all about. That's number one. The next thing we're gonna talk about is development, the second purpose of work, specifically self-development. Development is, is about progressing your skills. It's all about you unraveling your authenticity, figuring out who you are while you're at work and failing and trying again. It's about evolving your brain, upgrading your brain, constantly learning enhancing your self-awareness. So service on the last two slides was about others, how you could help others and make others better. Development is about you, how you can make yourself better. And when it comes to development at work, one of the things that I'd like you to think about is how you can be more curious. How can you be more inquisitive when you're at work? as opposed to being diligent and just getting the job done, if you know what I mean. So I listed a couple of examples here in this table. Diligence looks like, I'll just do it the way I was told to do it, as opposed to being curious or exploring and saying, why are we doing it this way? And actually asking management the question, why is it we're doing it this way? Especially if you see a better way. Um, number two, I'll just use the standard template, whatever they give me. Um, as opposed to being diligent, once again, you could bring this to management if you feel comfortable enough, if it's within your job scope and ask them, hey, can I just create my own? Um, I see so many ways this could be improved. Can I just do it myself? Um, instead of using outdated procedures, uh, which is, from my experience was a very common thing, Maybe you can ask the question, how might I be able to update this outdated procedure or this outdated policy or this outdated guideline or whatever it may be? Take the initiative to ask the question. And of course, I'll just sit back and wait and see what happens. That's a very reactive mindset as opposed to how can I be proactive, which would lead you down the curiosity path and being more inquisitive. So if you could go to work and practice this mindset of how can I be curious? How can I explore? What kinds of questions can I ask that I've not asked in the past? That will really help you when it comes to self-development. Part of the path of self-development includes defeating those really tough obstacles and those really tough challenges that somehow find their way right in front of us when we least expect it. Self-development is about rising above the politics at work, the favoritism, the unfairness that you see, uh, the nepotism, all those things that come with human nature. Self-development is about how you can rise yourself above all of those things, even when it's going on right in front of you. And let me tell you, that is not an easy thing to do. That takes an emotional adult. Self-development is also about creative problem solving. So not just the technical creative problem solving, which is probably what most of us like to do here, but really the interpersonal problem solving skills as well as the personal problem solving skills are very important when it comes to self-development. The takeaway here on this slide is that self-development includes being the bigger person and doing your best given the information you have at hand. And again, that is not always an easy thing to do, okay? Um, I, I, trust me, I am very guilty of not doing that when I think back to my, some of my experiences in my professional life. And again, all of this information I'm teaching you is information I wish I would have known at the time. And when it comes to your self-development, I have taught you some really great tools here on how to enhance it and how to upgrade your own development. 
It started with the motivational triad way back in the very first class that we took together. Um, the motivational triad is a reason why we let fear hold us back. Okay, the brain's job is to keep us safe. It just, it doesn't want us to die. And it doesn't realize that if you stumble and fall, that you're actually gonna be just fine. I taught you how to help separate fact from fiction and why it's so important. Once you're able to do that, you can plug it into the STEER energetic framework. And the STEER energetic framework teaches you, it shows you why thoughts and feelings and emotions are so important in our lives. I taught you the concept of how to be an emotional adult and what that looks like. We talked about scarcity and abundance. I taught you that when you set goals, it's not about achieving them, it's about defeating the obstacles that get in your way. That's where the reward is found and that's how you develop yourself. I taught you about being attached to your career. Your career is an external. We don't want to be attached to externals because that means we depend on them for our happiness. And externals like jobs are very good at letting us down. So we wanna depend on ourselves. I taught you about the toolbox of life and all the resources that go in there. I taught you about swim lanes and how you have the most control when you stay in your own swim lane. We talked about lies that we've been told throughout our lives. And I taught you last week about happiness. I taught you about happiness and how it comes from within and it's not out there to be found. So this question here at the end, at the bottom of the slide is something that you could ask yourself on a daily basis. You could ask yourself on a weekly basis. Um, at the end of the day, what have you done with what you've been given? So I like this picture here. This picture is of an hourglass. And you could ask yourself this question either at the end of the day, um, at the end of a project. You could ask yourself this question at the end of your employment when you leave one partner and you go to the next. Um, you could ask yourself this question at the end of your entire career when you're getting ready to retire. What is it you've done with what you've been given? It's a very profound question. Now that leads us to the third reason we go to work. And that is about leaving a legacy. Legacy is about manipulating and using your capabilities, seeking to make improvements around you, whether in people or things, celebrating your originality, recognizing your originality, applying your own brand and authenticity in the workplace because you have something very unique and special and different to offer that other people can't. Legacy is about maximizing your output, creating your unique impacts, and you can only do that if you understand how you are authentic and if you celebrate your authenticity and don't run away from it. Legacy is about leading yourself as a proactive change agent. So what I'm saying here about legacy is leave everything better than you found it. Whatever you touch, whoever you talk to, whatever you come into contact with, leave it in better shape than when you found it. That's what legacy is all about. So here's my question too for everybody in the chat. Of the three career purposes that I just talked about, which is service and self-development and legacy, is one more neglected than the others. When you think about how you go about your business at work, when you think about your day-to-day -day, in your job and in your career, when I mention the three work purposes, service, development, legacy, is there one that stands out to you that kind of screams, oh, I've, I've kind of, I've missed this one and I need to work on this one. And, and maybe not, uh, maybe you've done a good job of, of trying to balance all three without even knowing it. Um, so I'm interested to hear your answer in the chat. Once the presentation is over with, um, we'll dive into your answers here. But I'm just curious to know 
Um, if one of these you feel is more weak than the other two. And again, that's service, service to others, service to other things around you. Number two is self-development. And number three is legacy. So when it comes to legacy, I have taught you tools and concepts, once again, to help you leave your legacy in the workplace. I taught you about life curriculum. That is the whole external platform each of us has been dealt in life. It's the cards we've been dealt in life. And our life curriculum is very unique and different from everybody else's. I taught you about investing in your career, about how to recognize imposter syndrome and indecision. And I taught you decision-making tools and tips. We talked about authenticity and how influence comes into play when it comes to leadership. Um, you can't make, you can't control what other people think, but you can influence what they think about you. And leadership is so important. It does not matter what your role is at work. It doesn't matter what your title is. You are a leader, no matter what. You are leading your own life. You are leading your own career and you have control over it. We talked about employer and employee relationship and that it's really a partnership. And part of your job as, as an employee is to show up and ready to buy in and uh, do your best with what you've been given. Okay, the employer-employee relationship is not a dictatorship. They are not supposed to be dictating to you and they're certainly not supposed to take over your life. We talked about work drama and we talked about what success looks like. Success is a destination. So the takeaway about legacy is to always leave your occupation when you're ready to move on in a turnkey status. Always leave your company in a better framework than when you found it. Now let's talk about your future. So now that I've explained what work purpose is, the good news about work purpose is that you don't even have to be employed in order to fulfill work purpose because career purpose also applies to life purpose. I love this quote here at the bottom. I don't know where I heard this, but somebody said your future is your property. And I love that. I think that's very applicable and important. So what do I mean when I say that the career purpose also applies to life purpose? Well, look at this list here. You can volunteer, you can get involved with nonprofits and churches and helping family members, community, being involved in committees and boards, being a mentor for somebody or being a coach for somebody. So work purpose, which is service, and development and legacy can also be accomplished outside of work. And in fact, I encourage you, I highly encourage you to try to fulfill those three things outside of work. And the picture here of the bridge reminds me of, um, I hear a lot about employment gaps and people often ask me, what am I supposed to tell my next employer if I have a gap in my employment? You know, I'm, I have a couple months here where I didn't do anything. And the answer is very simple. Think about your life purpose. Think about service and development and legacy. Okay, if you are developing yourself, if you're leaving a legacy, if you're serving others during that employment gap, and you take that to your next job interview and you tell them, this is what I did and these are the courses I took or these are the people I helped, they can't argue with that. So again, career purpose really applies to life purpose. And here at the bottom, what I want you to remember is that working without expectation of a reward could be one of the most rewarding journeys that you could experience in your life. Number two, reward is really found in overcoming all the obstacles and challenges that keep you from knowing how capable you are. So once again, I can't emphasize enough, that is why failing 
and failure is so important. That's why it's essential and necessary in our lives in order to grow and evolve. So here is our summary from tonight. I taught you that career purpose is about serving, serving others, serving things around you. It's about developing yourself. It's about leaving an impact in the world, leaving everything better than when you found it. Career purpose also applies to the way you choose to live your life. And here's the final conclusion that I'm going to finish. Self-development is less about learning new skills as it is about discovering ourselves by giving something up, including some of our most cherished notions of the person we think we are in order to discover the person we could become. The very relevant conclusion, and not just for tonight's class, but for the whole course. And so what I want to say to all of you is congratulations, not just for finishing this course, but you have really gained a really critical skill. It's a lifelong skill that you'll be able to take with you for the rest of your life. And what you've learned in my course here is how to manipulate neuroplasticity. And remember way back to class one, neuroplasticity is the idea that we have neural pathways in our brains which hold our beliefs. Every time we have a belief or a thought, that specific neural pathway lights up. And those neural pathways are capable of being changed and altered. So you have gained the lifelong skill of manipulating your neuroplasticity in order to reconcile what is versus what you want. And what I mean by that is what is, the column of what is, is reality. That's life. Those are the things you cannot change. Those are the externals. And the other column includes the things that you want and your wishes and your desires. And the reason that we as humans suffer and we're in pain and we feel the need to um, numb ourselves is because we don't know how to bridge the gap between what is versus what we want. So by taking this course, all of the things that I've taught you are going to help you bridge that gap between what is versus all of the things that you want and the things that you wish. And the beautiful thing about life coaching, the wonderful thing is that everything in the, in the what is column, the reality column, none of that has to change. It can stay exactly the way that it is which is great news because you can't control it anyway. You can control over here the way you think and your attitude and your mindset. And I have provided all of these tools for you over the course of this whole class, these 12 weeks, for you to be able to do just that. You know how to help yourself bridge that gap between the two. So congratulations. Not many people know this stuff. Um, so I'm so glad that you guys and gals were able to join me on this journey. And the last slide, this is my very final quote for all of you. Sad to say goodbye. It's been great. What I want you to know is that now that you know better, be better. Go out there and make your impact and be better. So thank you so much. I'm gonna stop sharing my slides. I'm gonna stop the recording.